Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Monster Episode 31. Last episode wasn't going so well for me. Uh, I noticed that after the recording, I noticed that one of my recordings kind of muxed two of the recordings that I had together. Normally I do two recordings separately, right? The one for the screen where I do record my version of the of the anime that's going and the other one where I do record my video footage and whatever so I can actually spliced them together the way I need them to be spliced together in terms of like um, opacity, transparency, whatever. A problem is I noticed that the two video files actually got put into the same video file. That happened one time to me in my entire history, like the entire year that I've been doing reaction recordings uh, on a weekly basis. It happened one time to me before and that was very, very early on. I really didn't know that this could be happening again, but it did happen again. It's kind of weird because both video files exist within the same file. And it like there will be a video file that would be playing for the entirety and it's just that file and that's that. And then if you switch over, right, you, you jump ahead on like the controls of the video player, suddenly you will be within the other video file that's basically existing. It's so weird. I don't know why it happens. I don't know how it happens. It only happens once in a blue moon, right? But I'll, I guess I'll have to go into my video editing software and hope that I can actually mux that, like kind of break it apart and find a way to, to make it happen. Now, obviously, I'll have to see how the, the audio files are going. Uh, I still have a backup audio file, which I do have with my camera video file. It should be okay. The audio probably sounding... A lot different. I'm probably going back to that one when if I don't have the time or can't figure it out. Because the one that got primarily recorded as far as I can tell is actually the, the video footage of the, the anime episode. So we'll see how it works. Either way, we are at a very, very tricky situation where Tenma just swooped in actually to save our doctor from... Um, Roberto, who who was about to kill him, so I do wonder what we're what we're getting ourselves into this episode. But let's jump into it. I don't want to keep you home, like hold you up too long. Monster episode thirty one. Um, I got it up and ready, right here to go. A two, a one. A bam. No, they're just eating weisswurst. Look, Dita, what are you doing? ディータだっけああ、さあ、あんたもこないとディータにスペシャルイズアクチュアリーグッド。ネズミ祭我慢すりゃみんなできるぜ。悪いな、夫。無愛想だが気はいいやつな。さ、腹が減ってはいそうは適物。すみません。部屋までお世話になってしまって。礼を
And he would know that from like the pictures on the wall, right? For Hartman. From Hartman's home. He came too late. <laughs> the world works in strange ways, doesn't it? It's gone now. Hmm, that's not his real name. Another face to face meeting between Tenma and Johan. Holy shit, color me excited. I was about to skip, but I shouldn't. Because all of you who sync up would curse me. I'm just eating some some normal pizza. Like beef um beef salami, well beef pepperoni on it. I do hope I don't have to edit this out. Don't want to bother you with my chewing noises. I gotta say, Tenma is looking more and more like he is in the intro. Coincidence? I think not. バルバハウンとシューバルトアゲ。シューバルトザイバツの中心となっている会社だ。ほとんど外に出ることがなかったシューバルトがこのところを顔を出すようになった。The reflection of like the building on the other side almost looked like um like a UN building or something. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, Carl, that was the son. Tenma seeing Johan again. For the first time in forever. So far we've only been on his trail all this time, right? Oh yeah. The other time was in the in the darkness. Does he want to kill him or does he want to expose him? Because Tenma wanted to kill him. Because that is not Tenma's main objective to clear his name.
Almost. Forty-four years. Doctor Tenmato, you get taking a shining of Look how downtrodden. How downtrodden Tenma is looking. Like he was way more st positive last time we saw him. What's this like? Is that because of Eva or is it like just like he's he's tired of it? Or maybe it's the upcoming Maybe it's the thing he wants to do. Yeah, I think his like willing like his willingness to be like I don't want anybody else involved in this is a weakness. He's connecting the dots. He's connecting the dots. The gun. What he's been mumbling. Reichwein. <laughs> テマはどうしてますか今はレイの隠れ家にいる。絶対そこから出ないように強く言ってください。どうも気になることがあるんです。私もなんだ。え彼がドクターテマが予判を報告的は自分の無実を。And And he's gone. Dr. Ten was probably gone from the hideout. But he left Dieter behind. Dieter. And Dieter knows too, right? Holy shit, teacher. I feel for you. There's so much. I can't say it all. He's going to become a murderer, right? He doesn't want that. But who's gonna stop Johan? Right? Tenma feels like he's the only person who can actually do it. Person? Looks like a penitentiary. Ooh, is that longer? Is that longer? What the fuck is going on? Is that longer? なんだって。なあ、ドクター。なあ、切ってくれよ。そんな女、首を絞め上げた時どんな声上げたと思う？なあ、ドクター。うん。おいしい。What a job. What a job, Rudy. 
ドイツ連邦捜査局のルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルンルン超越犯罪心理学概念あれだけ連続殺人犯の心の奥深くまで入った論文は他にはありませんよ。特に262ページから294ページに至るハインツ・カウエの考察。犯人の幼年期のトラウマがいかに犯罪に結びついたかというくだりは興味深く拝読いたしました。<笑>これはまたお詳しい。そんなに熟読していただいて光栄です。私の操作法も。He's taking note of the behavior。犯人になりきることで行動を割り出していくものでしてね。But to do that, you need to make assumptions, right? 今度ぜひ時間があったらゆっくりと。お互いそれほど時間がないようなので、今ここで伺います。あなた最近よくミュンヘンにいらっしゃってますね。それが何かまあちょっとおかけになって時間は取らせません心理カウンセラーのライヒワイン博士に会ってらっしゃる昨日ええ大学時代の恩師ですが、うん、デュッセルドルフ大学のええデュッセルドルフ大学時代あなたの同期で非常に優秀な脳外科医がいましたね天満何が言いたいんですか会えましたかドクターテンマン。何の話ですかカンニングの思い出を語り合おうルーディー。あなたは前週の有力新聞に5月1日から22日までの間、産業広告を載せていらっしゃる。It could be right fine. It's like... It's like... まさか、あなたやドクターテンマみたいな優秀な方々が、学生時代にカンニングをされていたなんて。いいものですな、親友というのは。別に、ドクター・テンマとは、学生時代親友だったわけではない。昨年の5月、オーデル公園。あなたの協力で、フェルバート警察は、ドクター・テンマを包囲し、身柄拘束寸前まで行ったが、うん。あれは、私の体につけた盗聴器の故障で、あなたの逃亡ほ助とも考えられます。彼は、ドクターテンマは無実だ。おお。謙虚な気持ちで。おお。デュッセルドルフアイスラー記念病院の院長以下三名の殺人。建設中のビルで起きた患者の殺人。He's gonna believe that he was manipulated, right? Rudy was manipulated. 中年夫婦殺人。これらすべて犯人はテンマではない。犯罪心理学者としてテンマと直接面接した私の出した結論だ。なるほど。で、今彼はまたどこかへ行ってしまった。なぜ彼は逃げるんです無実ならなぜ逃げるんです ?He's chasing. では、なぜ親友のあなたの前からの姿を消したんですかあ、彼が犯人ではないという証拠がある。これを見るといい。この事件の情報をすべてまとめて分析したものだ。うん。I'm not gonna believe that Johan Liebert is just an imagine, like a figment of Tenma's imagination. I don't know if he'll be convincing enough, Rudy, right? His, his report is his ideas. So, the Sibet of a cat de Mora Mastaka. Hubert on a Muscoe cut at the Harlem to you, Sen and the Hinch. Jiken would choose a state that he had to ground to you, Moto Cage no Hinch. Dive who goes Hubert on a Caxibo Sodo. What conclusion is he going to come to? 真犯人としてあげたなと同じ。And his conclusion? 
聖同盟のヨハン・リーベルとなる人物の戸籍がブルンタールで発見されたさらには先日リハルト・ブラウン氏の後を受けて調査を始めたドクター・ライヒワインは何者かに狙われたよーくわかりました And here it comes. これらが関連した事件であるということを立証するのは不可能です。そのことを一番よく知っているからこそ、天馬は行方をくらました。違いますか Right. I mean, he's making the right conclusions, but under the wrong lens. その手の記憶は正しい。あなたの判断はすべて間違いないと。あなた、家庭はありますか趣味は何ですか仕事だけに生きてきたんじゃありませんかミスを犯したことはありますかミスを犯すのがひどく怖いんじゃありませんかあなたにとって、天馬は悪人でなくてはならないんだ。Otherwise, he would have made a mistake. アイデンティティが崩壊してしまうんだ。Your entire construct falls apart. これがヨハン・リーベルと本人の写真です。これらすべてが天馬の嘘だと立証できますか He's gonna reject it now, but it's gonna stay in his mind. この青年は今どこにミュンヘン大学の学生です。今はシューバルトの秘書に収まっています。この写真お預かりしてもよろしいですかねここからは我々警察の仕事です。私は大変なミスを犯していたかもしれない。Is he capping? Or is he still like I need to find Tanma? Is he. Right, he, he didn't show his face, right? So he might still be after Tenma and use this as a, as a way in to actually get to know where he is. Although he could have guessed with the Munich University thing. Who's he calling? Ah, uh, of course. Fuck you, Lunga. And your fragile ego. I mean, I get it, but still. Wait, isn't this the guy who. Maybe I'm wrong. I think it's not the guy that Nina was acquainted with. He looks a little bit like him. Yeah, there are dark clouds over his eyes. Like he's staring directly at you.
All right. Hmm. I think I might go for another one, actually. But that probably means that I can't do Technolize for the rest of, like, the month. But it's going so well right now. Hmm. All right. All right, let's jump through it for a second, all right? Uh, we're not going to go too long. But this is going to be a right away discussion. I do love these little shots. These are kind of giving the entire scene their breath, right? They're giving depth to locations. You do see all of like, which, which you see in almost every locale, right? The glasses hanging at the ceiling in those weird little like things where you do like get them out probably because like if there's still fluid in them, they can, it can drop down instead of staying in there and leaving like, like stains from like drying out and, and leaving like the minerals behind and whatnot. Like the chalk and what whatnot that is in the water. You do have like, I think this is even a Pepsi symbol over there and we do have some random sort of other drink, maybe a beer or whatever. I can't identify that. Dieter eating, eating a fucking vice wars. holy shit, I'm gonna puke. <laughs> I mean, if you're like from the US or from somebody else, this is not a normal thing to eat. Uh, I mean, like, yes, it's available everywhere, but it's it's like a Bavarian thing to eat. We're Munich, obviously. Munich is in Bavaria. And this is like a typically Bavarian thing to eat. And like a good deal of other people in Germany actually find that disgusting. <laughs> I don't even know what a Weisswurst is exactly, but it's like, it doesn't taste good in my, like it's very aromatic as well. Like I'm, I'm really not a fan of those. Right. I mean, I'm not a fan of Wurst in general, right, of, of like, um, sausage, but I, I don't like the Weiss Wurst at all. Tenma is looking like 20 years older. He's looking like he's absolutely given up on life. It's terrible. Also, he's kind of looking around, right, like being being on edge, but also he's, he's in his thoughts of like, like what he's about to do if he meets Johan, because he's very close on the trail. Very interesting that he says that Richard kind of brought me to the brought you to me, which makes sense in multiple ways because Richard was kind of saying, "Hey, by the way, there's this guy," or at the very least, he kind of like like did his research and was like, "Oh, this Johan dude is involved in all of this stuff," and um, there's this Tenma dude who was like suspected of that. I think it's not him. And then we talk, right? We. Um, Reichwein sensei talks to to Dr. Gill and to Rudy and we we kind of talk to one another and are like okay this right this is how the conspiracy starts this tough guy holy shit I've prepared a bed in the attic if you can stand the rats you can rest there interesting I I mean you wouldn't expect rats to be in the attic more like to be in the basement but actually they can be like um there is very sorts of like one wandering rats that do make their way up in, into the attic as well, but it's not as common as being in the basement, mind you. Especially like, um, I, I mean, I guess we're in a big city that is also kind of perpetuating that. I, I grew up on a countryside where there's more like mice, you find more like field mice and whatever. And occasionally, yes, you find rats as well, which can be a problem, but this is like not the city rats. Those are kind the kind of rats that are like kind of just out and about, right, in the, in the field and whatever freeway in the, the in the back there yeah you find a lot of like innkeeps who are like really big and burly and whatnot and like like broad shoulders but in in reality they're actually really nice people it's very interesting that you do have that outward appearance of like don't fuck with me and probably you shouldn't because they, they are strong enough to actually deal with you but oftentimes they especially if they're like in the restaurant business or whatever and they're taking care of customers especially if they're also just doing the normal um waiting and whatever they're probably very good at dealing with customers and knowing when how to approach them and not losing their temper otherwise probably the locale wouldn't be working right the restaurant would go under do love that angle where we're showing like 10 man on the side teacher with his happy-go-lucky face and we do like zoom in right like we have like a 
a focus pull kind of as Stefan Yost who who was in Kinderheim and we kind of explained that I do love these shots as well right that we're not just looking at Reichwein Sensei and he's talking but that we're looking past the shoulders of Tenma to Reichwein Sensei and we are point of view probably of Dieter because it's like a little bit lower than Tenma and it's a really good way to kind of show two people interacting with one another without without having to show just one of them or having to be an outside perspective where you're wondering who is looking at that right because it's not as usual to show this kind of perspective when there's nobody looking at that i mean it's it it's being used but like this is purposeful and it's really well done in my opinion and then we show like from from somewhere else which is probably like i don't know in keep or somebody who would be standing at the corner right at the counter here would be seeing them just interacting like that and now we're showing between the the two shoulders it's like we're switching angles continuously which is a really really nice thing I, I do love that in monogatari as well that we while the conversation is going on we keep the viewer engaged by changing the angles by showing everything and that also kind of makes the room feel more 3d right it doesn't make the like you are at the point where you do feel like the the room you know you could map out the room in your head um, it makes it a lot easier than if you're just being shown one corner of a room and only that corner and only that perspective because then you can't really get a sense of how everything looks. But yeah, we talk a little bit about all of this and we actually go there to see this. This is the opposite and this is like your typical like, I, I guess it might be a government building because there's a lot of flags on the top, which makes me feel like either this is like a lot of promotional flags or like a big car company or whatever or big financial center could still be but i feel like this might be more like an institution where there's like a couple of flags of different countries or of one country being there although we don't see any colors of flags there's just supposedly white flags so i'm not sure i do love how we're looking through the window to tenma and we still have like right one sensei's eye kind of in the shot very interesting shots a lot right like this this house front which is like closed in and it's just mirroring what's on the other side and on the other side we do have like that middle way where there's a pillars going down on the left side and up there there's it's like really boxed in and it feels like tunnely and on the left side you do have open space but you still have like the the skyscrapers in the background where it feels like this is still cityscape this doesn't look like nature or rural or whatever and we have the slow reveal of of um, Schubert, right? Like slowly, we're we're revealing the curtain of everybody, Schubert and Karl, and and this is when when for the first time Tenma actually seeing Johann um, being revealed with his cold, cold smile, and you do see how his eyes go up, and he's like, so this is how he looks like, right? This is how he looks like in in daylight. Like how, how can this monster, right? This this like creature. It exists just like that in broad daylight. At least that's how it feels to me. And we do have like Tenma going very much the, the shadows over his eyes, like over his general face. There's a little bit of light on the on the right side, which is very unusual because normally you do have shadows on this side, right? In 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 a shot such as that, you normally you have shadows on the one side, right? And you have light on the other side, but it's reversed. And it feels like he's kind of is kind of getting himself ready for something very grievous that he has to do, he feels he has to do, which is killing Johan. We're driving away at first, we do have like, I can't read those, unfortunate, um, but nice shots of the city. Werner Herzog, Wilhelm Wenders, Richard D. Brown, so they are, those are people, um, like actual people. Not... Natasha Kinski, Wolfgang Becker, and Bruno Gantz, right? And those are files, probably, of his of his patients. We do have Richard Brown, um, personal data, or whatever you want to call it, uh, age 44 years, um, born 25th January of 1951, nationality German, um, hair color brown, job, um, former police officer, uh, or... Yeah, yep, former police officer um, results. Right? I don't, I can't identify that first word, but it's February 1995 or, yeah, 1995. Uh, lives in Dusseldorf, uh, North Rhine Westfalen, which is um, like a state. Employed at Elsa Clinic as uh, lead of the um, search and unit or search, search and um, team. 
Oh yeah, that, that okay, 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 now I get it. Treated on February and who who treated them? Possessed due to his due to his uh, occupational competence and friendly, righteous characters, the trust of patients and colleagues. Feels weird, kind of, right? Because we have the pers person personal stuff of like Richard Brown, and then after what's underneath, we do feel like it's describing Dr. Reichwein, right? So I I wonder why that is the case, but hmm. Because like this, this doesn't apply to him, right? He's not like a surgeon in like the the the, the Düsseldorf clinic. So I'm kind of like, hmm. Although, huh, maybe we're talking about Tenma here, like the research we've been doing. Because like that, that would apply to 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 Tenma, but it's not the Euler. Was it? I think yes, it was the Euler clinic. So yeah, that was our research that we did together. Weird that it's within that thing here. Yeah, we have Mordverdacht down there, like like the the sus suspicion of murder. Yeah, that's Tenma. They're talking about Tenma, and he's like, we need to find a witness. He's like, on oh, the case, he's like, we're gonna prove your innocence, and he's immediately realizing that Tenma is not want, does, is not really interested in proving his innocence, because he thinks like, once he kills Johan, he has done his job, and then he's not innocent anymore anyway, right? He's gonna go to prison, but he's gonna take that. We do have like. Love that shot, like, the, through the window and, like, the reflection and whatnot, and he's kind of just making the connection. He's like, shit, he has a gun. He has been talking about these things, right? It's like, like, and he's not responding to my, like, we're gonna prove your innocence. Not like a normal pe person who wants to do that would, would be like, holy shit, yes, yes, please, let's do that. Or, yeah, I'm trying to do that all along. No, he's not saying anything. And then he is like, it has to happen now, right? Mumbling under his breath. He's not even saying it to Ro Dr. Reichwein. So it's like... And we do have the focus with the with the gun and everything, like the, the the shot over the over the gun onto the face, yeah. And he's like, shit. And that's when he gets called by Rudy and he's like, I'm worried about Tenma, and Rudy's like, I'm worried about him too. And then that zoom out, I do love that. Well with the, and he's like, holy shit, because he's shocked by like Dieter is standing there and he doesn't know what and he knows something is wrong, right? That's the feeling that's being created here. It's going down on Dieter's level, he's like, what's happening? And holy shit, there's emotions that, that are within Dieter here. Where he's like, I don't want this to happen. Like, I know Tenma. I've spent like the last, I don't know how long it was, but the, 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 the last months or years with him. I don't want him to get to the situation that he has to kill somebody, right? Become a murderer, actually get, go into prison for something that, for a righteous person like him. Beautiful scene, right? House side on the ones like very closed off and whatnot. And we have the tree over them, like very green vivid life affirming right and on the left side we do have the sun rays coming in and the open street a very nice composition of a shot we'll talk about lung in a second but i think like that is one of tenma's biggest weaknesses it is that he cares too much about like dragging other people into this and being like no i don't want to do that he's isolating himself from any kind of support network he could have and whenever he fails whenever he doesn't manage to do the things he wants to do right which he doesn't even consider, I feel, right? Or even if he does consider them, it's like my life is over if that's the case, right? Like I die or like, or I, I need to go after Johan again, right? And find him again. But he doesn't consider that he could build up an information network of people who know about this thing. And the more know about this thing, the harder it is to kill people. But he doesn't have like the morality within him is like any person that dies because of this, because I put the information into their hands is a person too much which is the right approach to have but in a situation like this you need friends you need allies you need people who are there for you who you you can trust who you know are intelligent who take care of themselves right you need these people bro you need these people interesting angle right with the bad head being so big right and he's he's like getting into a rage talking about his murders a lot of serial killers do seemingly at least if you believe the media seemingly like to do that right to, to just brag with their kills um, and seek recognition in a way for their craft, basically, right? Because it's kind of where they where they get their pleasure from this way. Like if people are upset about their deeds or if people are fascinated about their deeds on both sides, right? There's attention. There's like recognition of oneself, almost like you you are confirming your own existence, basically. It's not all, but yeah, that is an element, definitely. Rudy being stressed as fuck and then 
then Lunga comes in and he's like, allow me to introduce myself. <laughs> And he's like unimpressed at first, right? Lo again, love the shot where we do have like his shoulders in 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 the frame, and like the quick gaze at at Lunga's like mnemonic ish movements that I I'm still not sure that they would work. But yeah, I mean I said that in the beginning of the reaction, like writing something down definitely works, right? If you do have associations to make, it works, right? But I do wonder what kind of person you are. You have to be what kind of brain you have to have in order to memorize everything you type down because it's much easier if you memorize something that you actually written down because afterwards you immediately look up, look upon it right you have that visual component or if you talk to yourself about something right because these 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 are not just letters or words these are not just letters they form words and these are not just words they form sentences and these are not just sentences they form ideas right those are concepts that are kind of squeezed into squeezed into a framework right like if you have any loose loose sentences or or like essays that make no sense you will have a very hard time remembering them because there is no cohesive tissue that connects them right and this is one of the tricks when we look at for example like studies regarding working memory that working memory is limited right we can only work with a certain amount of information at a certain time right and we have a limited capacity of what kind of information in terms of words or numbers or whatever we can keep within that working memory yeah sure we have like our long-term memory we do remember what we did like a couple of minutes ago or what we were generally talking about what well, we need to start that process again if it's out of our working memory now a working memory is limited right to like uh, three or four maybe five or six at most probably eight, nine digits. Most of the time it's like an average, I think, of four or five that we can remember, like for example, four numbers. But there is a trick to actually expanding that and that is creating chunks. And chunks are, for example, if we create out of the order four, nine, two, one, we do 4,921 and then it's one chunk. Instead of like four, four different like digits, we cram it all into one of those slots basically and then we have three slots free again right for 4921 and then i can remember another one which is like a thousand number or a hundred number obviously a thousand number is a little bit harder to to remember than than a hundred or ten or ten like two two digit number but it is easier to remember than remembering each of these numbers individually because they are a concept they are like a, a certain size like four nine two and one are not the same as 4921 but we can squeeze them into a slot and after we squeeze them into a slot and need to work with them we can retrieve them again and take them apart and be like we know this these were different numbers right and this is how we kind of squeeze in information more information into our working memory into like what we're thinking about right now then we actually would have raw capacity for it's like compression almost like with a computer where you, where you compress files into a smaller smaller file size and then later on you actually decompress them and they're there again and this is how we can work with that so obviously Memorizing concepts is a lot easier, so I can imagine that it's a lot easier to memorize something that you've read in an article or something that you've seen as a visual in a, I don't know, YouTube video or whatever, than it is to actually memorize something by just doing the hand movements. You have to have a, an incredible motoric like memory to recreate those and also like Muscle movements are working completely differently, right? Choreography, whatever, it's working completely differently than how we save information on an emotional level or how we save information on like a like a language level, on a like writing or reading level or or like listening or or speaking or whatever. So I'm not sure if that would work, but it is I mean it's plausible, I guess. It's just not I've I've never heard of a person who actually was capable of something like that. And we have that back and forth and for a while I actually felt like felt like Lunga was willing to listen to him but I had the sneaking suspicion that everything every piece of information that was coming into Lunga's brain was being filtered by the fact that he is like I'm convinced of my theory and that's what Rudy points out he's like look I understand the moment you accept that Tenma is not the killer 
that moment you will realize you've wasted years of your life. You have been sacrificing your family, possibly, right? Your job. But I don't know when if he's employed again. I, I, I don't know, really, right? Because supposedly I feel like he was fired a couple, like, uh, like, I don't know how many episodes ago, right? Episode 20 or something along those lines, or 21, 23, something along those. Like almost 10 episodes ago, he was fired, supposedly. So I don't know why he's showing like his police badge around again, if he's like just doing a private thing or not, or if he's been rehired or if he's just been demoted or something. Either way, he's sacrificed a lot of stuff in his personal life, right? A lot of his career, whatever, right? And also his him being convinced that he is always or most of the time right about what he's doing, his theories and whatever. Him realizing that he's so wrong and admitting that to himself would shatter his ego, right? Shatters confidence, shatter all of these things. Everything would break apart. This is the only thing holding him together, his pursuit of Tenma, his obsession with Tenma. Right? He even almost got himself killed for that. He was so convinced of Tenma being guilty, so he can't back down anymore, right? It's sunk cost fallacy plus a lot of other th effects as well, right? It, it's so interwoven with his identity, the fact that he is normally right, his hunches are right, that he can't turn around anymore. He can't be convinced otherwise unless he seizes, like, and even if he seizes with his own eyes, right, if there's clear evidence, he will still try to find a way to bend it in a way to kind of conjoin it with his own theory of what's happening. And I thought so, right? He's, he's listening to that to get the information he needs to actually get more or less a little bit under Rudy's skin and, and convince him that maybe he could be convinced that Tenma is not the killer. So Rudy tells him he's in Munich and Lunge immediately calls, he's like, Tenma's in Munich. Fucking get that bastard. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit, Lunge. You fucking bastard. Just fucking stop, okay? The problem is if Tenma actually pulls through and tries to assassinate Johan, this is gonna be just another piece of evidence for Lunge to say, this dude is a killer, look at that, right? Johan maybe was involved in this, right? This young man. And he's trying to kill him right here. Love that tilted angle glass shot. We do have like the, again, the, the shadow work on, on the face. Him training is kind of like adorable almost because he's like not, not all that. F I mean, actually he looks really fit, so I'm not sure. I guess he's just going all the way to exhaustion. That's how you do it. And Johan on the news as the enemy. Okay, uh, one more episode, one more episode. We're just gonna continue. I don't think I'm gonna pause this one. I don't even know if we're gonna do a post discussion after the next one. Um, like recording seems to be going well. So we are going into episode 30, um, 32. Under Broad Daylight was 31 and 32 is Sanctuary. I do wonder for whom, for Tenma, for Johan, for somebody else. Also, if I'm interrupting this at some point in time, it's possible that it is because the battery is getting pretty warm and my camera is just shutting off. In that case, uh, oops, sorry about that. Um, not really sorry because it's not my fault, but yeah. Episode 20, uh, 32 of, uh, I didn't stop the recording, good one. <laughs> I almost stopped it. Episode 32 of Monster starts in a three, a two, a one. And class is in session. Or no, class is done. Hey, Cal, how you doing? Hmm, Lotte, that was, that was her name. She looks a little bit distressed, but also the way she has her hands behind her back. She might be interested in Carl. Yeah. She was trying to, to find an excuse to actually, but he's occupied with his dad, right? That is mo his main focus right at the moment, like after his reunion. It makes sense, right? And he doesn't realize he's too dense to realize she's interested in him. And she's saying not clearly enough, so. Cool. 
classic. I do wonder if we focus on Carl this time around. This arc is going too pretty long. I mean, I'm loving it. Don't get me wrong. I'm really loving it. Like, there's sometimes there's these single episodes where there's one topic and it's it has barely anything to do with the main stuff. Those are neat too, but obviously these arcs with Johan and with a lot of playing, like moving pieces and whatnot, they're way more exciting for like the overall plot. Sanctuary. Uh... <laughs> Don't be down on yourself, Lata. Come on. Ooh. Not, not Anna, Nina. Hello. <laughs> I was just thinking about this. I didn't want to say anything to annoy you, but... <laughs> I mean, this looks like Nina. I'm really, I'm really happy. Yes. I'm so happy. Ooh, you've seen her before? Interesting. Mm. Sure, あたし、あんまり趣味じゃないんだけど、友達にムリに売りたいって。仕事解禁団と食事会に行くね。でもただの食事会じゃないんだ。君だったらダンスパーティーでも引く手あまただよ。じゃ。カール、what <笑> Ouch. Ouch. That hurts. <laughs> He's doing research, probably. あなたも丸ごと乱画について調べてるの? そしてこれが中年夫婦殺人事件ね。あなたすごいわね。情報収集には自信がある私も顔負けだわ。ここ シューバルトに認知されて彼の四つ身に収まった。その息子がシューバルト周辺の事件に関与している可能性は？え？それはないわ。百パーセント。カズツカール、right。そう。随分ね、新人。大学の研究レポートのためだけにしちゃかなり不
She's talking like that because of her problems in love right now. Mm. At least you're admitting that it's like about you and not about somebody else. It's not always as easy as it looks. I mean, I can't talk out of experience, but still, I feel like. Ooh, and they're going together. Well, that's cool. Damn, college parties changed. <laughs> of course. Holy shit, Lotta, what the fuck? <laughs> I know you. The worst she can say is no. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> She's like, I'm out! <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> She's like, no, I don't want to. <sighs> I'm sorry, dude. I mean, you might look a little bit creepy, but that doesn't justify that. Oh, she's not very interested. Been long since the last college party, right? Are you what? What is she asking? <laughs> yeah, yeah, call her out on it, Nina. Alright, that's a little bit much, dude. <laughs> Gotta be really uncomfortable. <laughs> Nina's gonna step in. What do you mean? Alright, oh, that's hurtful. I wonder if he did it or not. If he meant well. Or if he's just making things up. Because he sees them together. Alright. You show him, Nina. <laughs> Maybe you should have better had a uh, girl's night out. Oh, holy shit, my camera battery. Right. Should be okay, but I... <laughs> if I cut out, you know, you know why. Oh damn, this is not good. <sighs> Did like him. He feels discarded, ignored. He forgot all about you. It's only that, right? He doesn't realize. But she's gonna blame it, right? She's gonna blame it on him. Holy shit, Nina, what are you doing? Hmm, I wonder what she is thinking about, right? If it's 
something similar or if it's something completely else, right? And she's like, everything hurts. Right? All of these emotional experiences that she's had. There's this strength in there, holy shit. That is really impressive. And we had the next shot is like a sun shot, which is like hope. Like the new dawn. It's hard for Nina. She recognized Johan. Ooh, that is a cool shot. Rotation sh Ooh, that is an amazing shot. And we have Ru Euroliner. But it's Johan. Thankfully, Nina is gone. I don't want her to meet Johan right now. Ooh, what a mood changer. Ten mass training. Holy fuck, he's determined. I love these shots of like the sniper scope and whatnot. It failed the trials of the German army, but it's super accurate. What? <laughs> that is a statement. True. It's it's becoming infinitely harder if somebody know he's he's getting shot at. Ooh, is that a flashback? It looks like a flashback. Cause it feels like it's it's in those woods, right? Where's he just training? Hold oh, that is a beautiful high res shot. Oh no no, it's not a flashback. He's actually trying to do that. Uh alright. It's uh yeah, today is like a lot of fucking trouble, apparently. Uh, yeah, we're gonna stop it here. Let's just get back in, shall we? It is at 14.10. You're probably gonna see it. It's gonna be fine. We're gonna... I do hope nobody synced up. Uh, apologies if you did. Three, two, one. <clears throat> He's not gonna, he's not gonna, no, he's not gonna turn around and just look at him, holy fuck. What the fuck? Was that his nerves or was it actually happening? Oh. That is bad, somebody in involving somebody else. あの老人連れの若者の2人。そしてあんた。あんたこの森が好きかい。ああ。あの No, please, Chi-chan, don't get me involved in your personal story. Love that stick. <laughs> That was an interruption. He could have done it, right? I don't know what's in his gaze. Self-loathing because he didn't do it. Just a general pain of being here right now.
Waste of food, all they shot. Are you gonna shoot him in the middle of kids and traumatize the kids? And you know, you won't. Is that the reason he is surrounding himself with kids? <clears throat> Bro, you must have seen the kids. This is really hard for him. He keeps straining. Just because you're more physically fit doesn't mean you're tougher, Tanma. I know he's just trying to keep himself going, right? また料理に手をつけないで帰る機会。<笑> Just eat, bro. You're not gonna help yourself or your mental if you're gonna starve yourself to death. Holy shit, the way he looks, what the fuck? Like the bags under his eyes, it's insane. Does he even sleep? Bro, you are out of it. You're like gonna pass out. Leaving your DNA at the crime scene. There's the guy again with like the... The old man of force. What the fuck happened to him? Or is he sleeping? Hmm. Either he fell or he... Alright. Yeah. どうしだな。骨折はしていないと思います。応急処置はしておきました。あとは病院で見てもらってください。あんた医者かい？I would say no. I'm a first aid or like first responder or something. A medic. どうしたんです。鳥だよ。え?鳥が集まってきている。昔野鳥が肩に乗ってくる男がいてな。こう手を伸ばすと野鳥がそいつに止まるんだ。オッケー。Was it Schubert or is it just like a random story? Alright。国家社会主義ドイツ労働者党がこの国に理想をもたらすと本気で信じていた。
相手を追い詰めてみれば、恐怖感どころかどこにでもいるようなただの外国人だった。All right. しかし、その外国人が何者だろうと選択の余地はなかった。そいつは命令を実行した。Is he talking about himself? The way he's deeply involved in this. So, the car, 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 A bird. Symbolic, right? Tenma is yet innocent. Oof, that's making it even harder on Tenma. A beautiful idea, but will it actually be the case, right? Never again. It's very unlikely. All right. Yeah, that's been a short one. <laughs> it's all as it should be. All right, sorry, I had to listen to that. But we are going back and we are going through this right now. Um, very interesting shot on which we begin here. Very cool how we how we film basically past the legs of somebody and then we see a half shot basically of Carl going in here, right? Coming out of the, coming out of the classroom. And we do have Lotte actually approaching him. And I said that the moment I, I saw that, I was like, the way she's got like the, right, the the arms behind her, behind her, right? Like together probably, right? Clutching them a little bit and also kind of putting that posture out. That's kind of like not even conscious, probably a sign of her being interested in him. At least, I mean, I guess stereotypically and stereotypes exist sometimes for a reason not always sometimes they exist for a reason because this is something that has been observed right it doesn't necessarily mean that something is true obviously it just means that sometimes people are associated with that but sometimes it is true as is in the case of oftentimes just behavior in terms of like how we put our posture obviously there's always different reasons why somebody can have a specific posture right it's never a sure fire way to actually point to specifics but there's tendencies that you can point out where you're like yeah i think this could be the case right especially with all of the other things we know about carl and lotte it makes perfect sense and she's approaching him with like the the excuse of of talking to him like uh about mr schubert and whatnot with her anthropology stuff and she actually wants to see him right and go go somewhere with him and he's like no sorry i'm busy i, I have to i have to go with my father and he's only focused on that right like solely his entire life is focused on that. obviously it makes sense because he went to munich in the first place to actually research about his father and all of that stuff right that that was one of the first things also very lovely dress that she's she's been having on it feels like she's been taking a little bit more care of her appearance in this specific on this specific day especially so maybe that was the intent behind that but i i saw that coming that she wanted to actually just spend time with him do we have that like yeah the university friedrich emanuel um I, I can't make perfect sense of that but maybe it's also a little bit broken german uh at nine o'clock in the evening june 8th 1996 i was like Thought we could go together and she looks very it's very interesting we have a somewhat low poly shot of her the interesting thing about this the hallway was full just a second ago right and now it's completely empty 
And it's the effect it has on it, right? Like it has on us when we see this scene with the light shining through, but her being like her head being somewhat in the dark and her looking very plain, right? Even with like the way she's drawn in that way, not as detailed as she was earlier. And like the baggy, the baggy pants um, over there and her posture as she's slumping her shoulders. She feels alone, lonely, right? Left. And this is what we open with. And she's just... She's just like, she, she has to write her report, but she's like very unenthusiastic about it. And that makes perfect sense, right? Going through it and I'm so happy. I'm so happy that we have Nina again. I'm so fucking happy that we have Nina Fortner again. Holy shit. Please, yes, more of that. <laughs> And she has like that envy going on where she has, she's so pretty, she probably gets everything and whatever, right? But she kind of like low-key a little bit, a little bit, she, she looks familiar, right? But the moment I saw her, I was like, this is Nina, holy shit, yes, please. Also love how she's lurking from like the computer and, and just going over and then we have the, a couple of rotational shots in this thing. And now she's actually being more prominent and she's asking him outright and he's like, I know I'm I'm busy, right? It's very important. At the moment, he has other priorities, and he doesn't really see that, right? He he sees a friend, maybe wanting to invite you, or oh, maybe he does. It depends on if what this other this blonde guy was saying later on, if that was true or not. Obviously, it could just be false, and if it's false, then it doesn't matter. And I would say that Carl probably is just seeing a friend in Lotte who, who wants to spend some time with her friend, right? But if Carl actually said that to the guy, like, come on, dance with her, it feels like Carl is actually not interested in her because either she's unattractive to him or she's just like, he's not looking for a relationship right now and he's not considering it at all, right? So in this case, he's not even going to that phase of judgment, like that, that judgment phase of, is she a potential partner or not? And in that case, he is kind of pitying her, which would be even worse, right? If you think about it. And is why, well, like, when we're going later into the party and everything, she's very inquisitive, right? Sometimes a little bit too inquisitive for her own good. And her just look to the side, it almost feels like she's like, you feel the jealousy of her, like, looking at Nina being like, you look so perfect, so beautiful, right? You, you must have no problems at all. People must come to you and be like, Please, let me let me go out with you. Let me do this for you. Let me do that for you. It's not always that simple, right? I But Nina understands that, where, from which place that is coming from, right? She, she knows that Lotte doesn't... Like, she, she doesn't... It's not coming from a place of being mean. It's coming from a place of being insecure. And Nina realizes that. First time in a long while since she's been at a college party. I'm sure she's been at one before, right? Because we do have... We do have these. I do wonder why we do have one of those, like, after images burned in here. Scrolling through that. Maybe I'll need to reload this one. Let me just... I'll tr I tried. Yeah, the after images are still there, to, to a degree. We'll have to contend with it. Yeah, he's being very, like, first of all, he's drunk. And second of all, he's very, like, invading her privacy. He's not taking no for an answer. I this is this is no consent. Okay, she doesn't want even if she's maybe being superficial and she's being kind of a little bit nasty. Where well, she's like, "Ugh, not this guy," right? Before that, she was like, "Oh, a lot of guys, I'll take your leftovers," and she's like, "No, not this guy," right? Some people who are insecure, right? Who are maybe not the best looking are also sometimes the most uh, picky. Can be, not always, right? Sometimes. Right? This combination exists, that's what I mean, right? It's not like a thing that's always, right? This combination exists. There exist people in the world who are not as attractive, although I think Lotto is an okay looking girl, right? Who are not as confident in themselves, but still pick people who they think are somewhere there, right? Like, because they couldn't go lower than that in their own mind, right? They want somebody like that. But yeah, he's being like, Nina handles him and I do love that. And we do deal with the pain of being ignored. Love that shot, right? She's in the light, in the spotlight, kind of, but everywhere around her is shadows. And she's like, she's like looking down, you don't see her eyes. She's like just looking to the ground, like fixed perspective, tunnel, tunnel vision, basically. Clutching her pants, right? In like frustration and, and pain. 
and we have somebody who is really, really hurt by the fact that potentially, right, I personally, I don't quite believe it, but it's possible, right, it's still possible that he's being very insensitive and didn't realize that, right, in a way, or that this was his subtle yet very mean way to say, like, I, I'm not interested in you, but I think it was more, this guy was lying, probably, or at the very least, like, not telling the whole truth. Maybe they talked about Lotte, right, and... Like the blonde guy brought it up and then um Carl was like, Well, you're interested and you're like, Yeah, and then he's like, Well, why don't you dance with her? And he turns it, he twists it in a way, right? He said, like, it's not because I like you, right? He's he's because he got rejected, so he he needs to defend his own ego. And he's like, It's not because I like it, it's because Carl told me to do it, right? He he told me you need the right, you you, you you wouldn't get anybody else otherwise, right? That That is like putting her down at the same time as putting himself, like protecting himself in terms of his image. And I think this is what he did, right? He's like, he put a lie out, but it hurt her because there's this possibility that it actually happened. And Carl went like, there's this girl, she doesn't get anybody else, right? She's like kind of pathetic. Uh, I pity her. And that is, that hurts, right? That hurts deep because it hurts your pride. But it also means that the person you are interested in has no interest in you at all, thinks you're beneath them. That's not the case, I think, in this. Like, Carl's just too busy with his father, too too focused on his father, of his newfound, like, relationship here. And to, like, tie it in, right? He doesn't have to be at every meeting with his father. He doesn't. He really doesn't. But he is, because he feels like he has to, 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 to nurture this relationship. And Nina understands. She's like... And like I said, I do wonder, because she's, she's saying something like, along those lines of like, it hurts, right? I hate it. I never thought being ignored would be this painful. And then like, Nina's looking up and says, it does hurt. So I do wonder if this is like for her just like, our emotions hurt, like bad things happening to us hurts. Or if this is her directly relating to what Lotte is going through. Because we haven't seen her in that situation yet, right? We have seen she had an admirer in her, like, university times, but she was not reciprocating. She says it all hurts. She generalizes, so it might just be her being like, I know it hurts, it all hurts, right? Bad experiences, like, bad emotions, sadness, whatever. And she's like, she's... This, this girl is so hopelessly, enormously optimistic while not being naive, right? She's not naive. She's very much straight to the point, grounded. She knows what's up. But she has this bright outlook on life and it's so amazing. Right? This is this is a main character to, to identify with, to look up to, to actually admire. Because she she has that positivity inside of her. You go into that like thing with the rotational shot. We do and she makes the connection, she's like, shit, she looks exactly like Johan. And then we go over to Tenma's side. Again, we, we have this back and forth, Tenma's Nina, Tenma Nina. Which I absolutely love. These episodes are the best, right? Where we're slowly getting our, like, our plot lines converging and it's approaching, basically. And Tenma, we're talking back and forth. He's constantly, he's like, love the reflection in the scope and the detail of the shot. And this one is insane, where he's just turning around and she's looking directly at him. So the question is, does he know he's there? Or is it more like a coincidence and you just looked over and felt something weird and this is what it was. But he's really struggling with this and he's meeting this guy who's involving him in his personal business. He's like, dude, please, I'm just in the middle of like the, the most stressful thing of my life, right? The most pivotal decision and you're making it so much harder by involving involving yourself into my business right getting getting me roped into your emotional kind of thing and you're like your daily life and whatnot you saw me as well right there's this in, in addition to that although i don't think tenma has any illusions of not getting caught but he is he's out of it dude he's like he's trembling he's constantly he's he's overworking himself He's like not eating. He needs to fucking chill. Otherwise, he's gonna break down and nothing's gonna happen. He literally hurled, right? Obviously, also out of like a, a psychological thing, but also because he's not taking care of himself. And we had that problem before. Love that tilted angle to suggest he fell, right? I, I don't know if that's actually tilted, but at the very least, like it clearly suggests something in this way, right? And he's telling that story about like the 
the Nazi soldier, right, who, who like truly believed the country would be a better place and then just followed his orders. And since then, he's been he's been trying. He's been looking for redemption, like never again in this forest. And that is like that's the death sentence for Tenmai and his like his intentions because they're like just putting even more weight on him. But yeah, that was monster. Episode 32, I think I'll gotta leave it at that. There's a couple of shots that I really like. The rotational shot, for example, right? Uh, I don't have the energy. <laughs> I'll be seeing you next time with episode 33. I was just like, gotta uh, like Frankenstein all that footage together. 31, which didn't quite work. Well, like the file got messed up and now 32 where we do have like an interruption because the battery got too hot, right? It is what it is. Check out the Discord and Patreon if you like these things. Leave me a like, subscribe to the channel and all of that. Check out my other series, right? Monogatari, Rizio, or whatever. Disco Elysium, we're playing Disco Elysium. Really having fun with that. I'll see you next time. <laughs>